Hi, and welcome to First Generation American Drinks and Dialogue. My name is Anya Jablonowski. I'm the founder of First Generation American Project. First Generation American Project was launched to connect first generation Americans and share our stories, collect this timeless piece of history that we have about our experiencing, experiences of growing up with two different cultures in the U.S. We all have this fundamental experience of having our American side that we grew up with here and then this background, this rich cultural background that we inherited from our parents who immigrated here from countries from all over the world. Today I have with me Sonali Patel, the founder of Plurity Yoga, and Corrine Meyer, the founder of Hip Hop Aerobics Chicago. Ladies, cheers, thank you so much for joining us today. Now, I'm so excited to connect with you today because you both represent a similar industry. You're both in the fitness industry. You come from totally different parts of the world. So, so now you're from India, or your family is from yeah. India, and Corrine, your family is from Switzerland. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, I've actually known your father for quite a few years, and it was about two weeks ago, we bumped into each other at Raj Sai's birthday that First Generation American yeah. Project was sponsoring. And I was so excited to see your dad. You know, I'm waving to him across <laughs> the venue. And Corrine, you were there as well. Yeah. And uh, so your father introduces us together. And, you know, I've always heard great things about his beautiful daughter. <laughs> and uh, so I was really excited to meet you for the first time. Um, you know, he was like, oh, by the way, she's first generation American. <laughs> and uh, so it was from that moment where you told me about your business that you're doing and how you'd love to just, um, you know, spread the word about your business. And I thought this would be a great opportunity for us to connect on the first generation front, but also learn about what you do. Yeah. So I know that your dad is the CEO of LA Tan. Yeah. We're familiar of all of the great <laughs> billboards that you see along like 294. So when we had our conversation the other day on the phone, you said that you have big shoes to fill. Yeah. So tell me about the shoes that came from India all the way to Chicago. Where did your dad come from? Why did he come here? How old was he? Okay, well, um, he came from India without his parents, with his older brother um, at 16, while his older brother was 18, so my uncle. But I call him dad because that's how our culture is, mm -hmm. and we live in one house. So I have like two dads and two moms, I guess. Um, so they all came, or them two came here, and they lived at their uncle's house, so my grandma's brother's house, but they lived in two different brothers' house, I guess. I don't know mm -hmm. how to explain that. Um, and they worked at Dunkin' Donuts and a news press company at first. And then after saving some money, um, he opened his first video store um, at, I think, I don't remember the year, but, um, and then he had his competition right across the street that had 3,000 videos mm -hmm. while he only had 300, but he worked uh, hard, he worked long hours, and he finally um, kept saving money to open up more video stores, so he had about 60 or now, 70. What, what I love about this, too, is that not only are we getting a sense of history about your dad's journey, what he did, how he started his path over here, but... When we hear the term video stores, like for any kids out there in these days, they would be like, are you talking about the Redbox? Do right. you have like <laughs> Redbox? Because nowadays it's like, okay, we'll get our Netflix membership or, you know, like it, it, it's just like such an archaic term at this point. So yeah. I think, you know, I, I personally remember seeing all those video stores throughout Chicago. Um, but, you know, it kind of brings back, like, the nostalgic it's feeling funny. of, like, walking through aisles and being yeah. like, what movie are we going to watch tonight? It's so weird because um, I use Netflix all the time now and Redbox, just, like, renting DVDs. I don't mm -hmm. want to go to a store and then, like, you know, pay to buy a DVD or even, like, rent one. It's Buy the party weird. spot. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm just go through the drive-through or something. So your dad knew that you know that's where this is going. That yeah. video stores are becoming okay. obsolete. So then he moved on to the next chapter of his life, which was what? Um, he did shoes in Italy. So nice. for like a couple of years after the video, I think it was 1997. Mm -hmm. And um, in 2000, he realized that like he was the shoes wasn't like I I guess working, and um, video stores was 
not possible after Netflix. <laughs> so he decided to do tanning, which is Ollie Chan, mm -hmm. and he does that now. Now, when your dad came here, did he come here with his parents, or what was his journey across here? How did he end up in Chicago? He came here alone, and from our whole family, um, my grandma's brother, older brother, was here. So he decided that he's going to come to Chicago and live with him and start working. And then eventually, after he makes money, he can bring his parents here from mm -hmm. our... Because um, in India, we lived in Gujarat. And um, that's a state, so inside the state there were like small cities, I guess, and there was a small village called Uttar Sanda, and that's where they're from. And like I, when I go to India right now, I visit it, and it's really small. All the streets are like cobblestone. Mm -hmm. So I like walk barefoot sometimes. It's like home, like everyone's na everyone knows each other in the whole like village. Yeah. So if, I, if I'm like, oh, this is, my grandpa's name is Harrier Bike. So if they're like, oh, this is Harry Boy's granddaughter, and they'll be, be like, what? She's this old? <laughs> like, they'll, you know, they know everyone, everyone knows each other. So right. it's like a small village. Um, and from there, um, they came here, my dad and his um, older brother, and then they lived with my grandma's brother, and then they made, like, video stores, and then eventually they, um, my dad went back to India. He got married. Now, so when we were talking about this on the phone the other day, you said that your dad actually went back for a wedding, right? Yeah, he went back for his older brother's wedding. Like, um, my uncle was getting married. And that was his first time visiting back home since moving he, to the U.S.? Um, yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay. And then his, um, his was arranged marriage, too, my uncle's. Um, and then um, that's when, like, my dad was like, okay, I guess I have to get married now. Yeah. Pressure's on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then um, he, it was, like, an arranged marriage, and my mm -hmm. grandpa's like, there's this girl, she's from a good family, I guess, and, mm -hmm. and then they, like, met, and they got to get, they had to get married, because he had to listen to his dad. Isn't that like, so interesting? Yeah. Like, can you imagine going home one day, and at the dinner table, there's some guy sitting there, and your parents are like, <laughs> now you're his. <laughs> yeah. This must but, be a unique experience. Yeah. You know, and it's only just a few decades ago. I mean, like, these Things are, have changed. yeah, these are concepts that we think that, you know, like, they stick around, like, Think about like from when they stopped to all the years leading up to that. Yeah. Like, and now we're the generation that's like, oh, no, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go on some dates. I might go on Mash or something. <laughs> right. Well, that's really interesting. So yeah. then, did he get married like that vacation, or did he no. come back? No, I think he came back. Um, I don't know the details about that, but he came back and he got married in 1981, I think. Um, and then. And then they all moved here, eventually. Okay, great. So then uh, you grew up on what part of Chicago? Were you in the suburbs or in the city? I was um, around Devon. So I lived on the street Granville. Mm -hmm. And my dad's video store was right there, too, around, like, on Rockwell and Devon, I think. Um, it's called Video Vision, but now it's, like, closed down. But right. that was, I think, his first one. And then we sold Indian movies there. Okay, and then he great. also had, a, like, American movie video stores that were, like, Atlanta Video and then BP Video, which was named after my great-grandfather. That's cute. Yeah. So, um, and they used to, I remember my dad telling me about the BP Video when he first came up with it. He wrote BP Video because of his grandfather, and he wrote a letter and mailed it to them, taking a picture of the video store, being like, this is named after you. Mm -hmm. And um, so we lived in Devon, and then I was born there, and then after th I was three, my older sister was born. She's actually my first cousin, but we're like sisters because we live together, and I'm uh -huh. like super close with her. So whenever we introduce each other, we're always like, oh, this is my sister. That's ha great. Yeah. Well, I and then I have a family cousin. friend who's my cousin, but we always say, you know, this is my cousin, and we're not blood-related, yeah. but, you know, it's like you grow up, your families are like every same party, Every, like, our lives are so parallel. Yeah. And then people will say, oh, your cousin, your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, we're really close. So um, we were born there, and then my younger sister was born. So then we're like, okay, I guess we have to move into a bigger house. So then my dad decided to come to Morton Grove, um, mm -hmm. and now we live here. Now, when you were born, was English spoken at home at all, or did you speak the native language? We spoke Gujarati, which is our native language, and then um, English was spoken when I went to preschool, and then as my sister went to preschool and she came back home from school and she'd be like, 
um, talking in English, and I would just learn from her. Mm -hmm. um, and then she was actually in ESL at first. Okay. But I wasn't because I guess I was used to. You got speaking. caught up yeah. through her, and then like I have the same exact the experience with that too. My brother is two years older than me, and I was always like looking up to him, like he's my role model, yeah. and so. He was the one that was learning English first and coming home, and then he'd want to, you know, speak it and practice it with me. Yeah. And then, like, to each other, we only ever speak English. But then, like, with our parents, we only speak Polish. Yeah. Yeah, it's just the, you know, you feel more comfortable with your parents or something. It's mm -hmm. just that they hold on to their language longer than, you know. And then it helps yeah. us keep it. Yeah. So what about, I, I know you mentioned, too, that your grandmother and your grandpa had a really big influence on you. Yeah, it was, I'm so happy that we lived with our grandparents. And as a joint family, we um, live with 11 people in our house. Um, even now we have 11, and my great grandma is still there, like living, mm -hmm. so which is like a blessing. Um, and I see the pictures that your dad posts with yeah, your great grandma, with and it's just beautiful. You just see so much joy in her yeah. face. Yeah, and she's like fine now. She like walks and like talks, and she's always talking to me about, oh, did you eat? Did you eat? And every like mm -hmm. 10 minutes, she'll ask me if I ate. Yeah, that's, like, that's the biggest concern. Anytime you go visit family, come eat. Yeah. We're just going to eat. Exactly. And now that I'm in college, she's always like, oh, I never see you, you know, because I adore. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, my grandparents had a big influence on me, like, growing up with them and still living with them right now because we had to speak in Gujarati with them. Mm -hmm. Like, that wasn't even a question because my grandma doesn't speak English and my grandpa does, mm -hmm. but... I have to speak Gujarati with him. It's like weird if I speak English. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's just the culture. And um, every day when we were young, when we didn't have school, I guess, and we didn't have that much homework and like we didn't, you know, hang out with friends, mm -hmm. we had to um, write five sentences in Gujarati, like write it, and then read five sentences to him, and then say our 40 prayers that we know. Mm -hmm. So that like kept our culture in us. And we. I, like, memorize everything. And now, even if I want to forget, I don't think I will. You right, know what I mean? Right, it's, it's like, just pretty much embedded in you yeah. know, at this point. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, even for me, I remember, so Polish was my first language, and it, we went to Catholic school, you know, kindergarten, first grade. But before that, all our prayers were in Polish. And so, yeah. every, like, any time even now when I say a prayer in my head, it's it's definitely in Polish, too. <laughs> you know, it's just, like, that reflex is, like, that's what Papcha taught me. Yeah. So that's what I do. So if I'm, like, praying, being, like, I want all A's, I wouldn't say it in English. I will just, like, say it Indian prayer, you know, <laughs> yeah. or something. But <laughs> Great. Now, did you have um, Indian friends growing up, or was it mostly just kind of sticking with your family? Um, I had Indian friends, but very few. Um, growing up, like, in elementary school, I didn't have that many Indian friends. I only had one, and mm -hmm. she was my Indian, only Indian friend throughout middle school, too, and high school. Mm -hmm. And then high school, I met a couple more, but I didn't have that many until I joined a club, um, which was Indo-Pak Club, and that was, like, the Indian slash Pakistani club, mm -hmm. and, um, so that's where I met a lot of Indian people, like, my, like, Gujarati people, and mm -hmm. I was like, what? Like, you speak Gujarati too? Yeah. What? Like, it was so <laughs> weird for me. Yeah. That's great. And then um, I did, like, traditional dances with them and stuff, so it was, like, nice meeting them. Well, so I definitely want to come back to that, but I think that's a great transition point, because, Corrine, you actually started Hip Hop Aerobics Chicago. Yes. <laughs> so now that you've got this great organization, I think we could kind of backtrack and find out how you got there and then we'll come back together and uh, get to like that college point of where you both were as first generation Americans. So uh, you came here when you were how old? When I was three months old. Okay. So I was a baby, you know, I only lived in Switzerland for three months more or less. Mm -hmm. um, so my parents, my, my entire family and generation lineage is so there's only one American, and that would be my brother, who was born here two years after we moved here. So mm -hmm. we're two years apart. Um, my parents basically met in Switzerland at Avis Car Rental, so they both worked at Avis, and then they dated for years and years, and through that, my father ended up working, uh, starting a wood, uh, 
wood floor installation company mm -hmm. and saved up money, this and that. And then eventually, you know, my mother had always been a world traveler. So um, because her father worked in the airline business, so she was able to get cheap flights and she would never spend money on anything other than travel. So <laughs> she managed to travel to China, Japan, Thailand, I mean, everywhere in the world. So she um, didn't really necessarily spend her whole life in Switzerland, but my father has. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, life there is great. It's a wonderful country, um, one of the most beautiful countries in the world. But the weather is very tricky. Uh, it can be like Chicago, just long-winded winters where mm -hmm. you don't see sunshine for days. Uh, the clouds get caught between the mountains. So, it, you know, really poor weather conditions. And I think that my parents just wanted to try something new. And my father had a business concept that he wanted to launch. And so it was perfect. My mom said, forget it. I don't want to be in this weather anyways. And my dad said, I want to start a business. So... Um, what they did was they started a company called Swiss Sam Drive, mm -hmm. and what this was was my father uh, rented, sold, and leased used uh, station wagons, vans, motorhomes, um, any kind of traveling car, which is really stupid. <laughs> we call it a traveling car because they're Every all car traveling <laughs> cars, but ones that you could go camping in or, you know, so you could see the entire United States because from the European perspective, when you go to the U.S., I mean, you want to see the entire United States. And mm -hmm. typically, if you go to Europe, you know, you go to Germany or France and you, you get into a little city for a while, you know, two weeks or something. And you just go train hopping right. anywhere. And exactly, they have the train system as well. So he thought of it in the way that these customers would want to see the U.S. in its entirety for three months up to a year. Mm -hmm. So they would take vacations for three months up to a year, which is insane wow. because in the U.S., you Can know. you imagine, like, telling your boss, well, and <laughs> you're all entrepreneurs, so you are your own boss, right. but, you know, so for anyone that's in, like, corporate America, oh. and they just send an email off to their manager and say, right. so I'm going to go rent a van for right. three to 12 months right. later. I mean, it's insane, <laughs> really, but, you know, and that, and at that time, the economy was just so strong in Switzerland mm -hmm. in the 80s and 90s that, you know, I mean, these are the, kind, the kinds of people who were able to do it, could afford it. Mm -hmm. And so um, it really worked out very well. He did it for 18 years, and it was based out of Miami. And then, of course, we built a hub in New York and Washington and California so that maybe they only wanted to go from Miami to New York. They could just drop it off in New York and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. But most people would really just travel everywhere. Then he tried moving into Australia and Canada, and 18 years, I think he just kind of got over it after a sure, while. Sure. But I mean, it was great, and we got to go camping every summer because of it. Yeah. And I mean, you just get to see the entire country oh, in and yeah. out, which is. And here's your mom. She's like, I'm going to fly over the world for a while, oh, yes. and then I'm just going to drive everywhere. Oh, yeah. And you know, for her, she like, loves driving the motorhome. She yeah. loves it. There were times when my father wouldn't come, you know. I mean, she would just manage. She planned all the camping sites out, you know. This is where we're going. And I mean, it was one of the most beautiful ways to see the United States. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, again, we're not American, you know. We, there was, everything was always still exciting for us. So we didn't, our family didn't grow up here. If we were going somewhere, it's not, we would know a few people, maybe through networking or what have you, but... Again, I mean, it's just always like a new and exciting experience. And a lot of the United States, people are very attracted to the big cities, but there is an immense natural landscape that right. is just... The and there's a bit of everything yes. out here, too. Yeah. Which, you know, where we live now, it's... At least we have a lake and some skyscrapers. <laughs> but, you know, I've, I've actually never been camping. Oh, and this is oh on, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. This I is on my... Either. Well, road trip... Road trip, road trip, <laughs> and we need to yeah, come. we'll just you know tap oh, into wow. anyone that your dad still knows through yes. that industry. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the way to do it. It's inexpensive. You can go for longer periods of time because it's more inexpensive. Mm -hmm. You know, you're 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 so much more flexible. You can move faster. Whereas you know, you go to a hotel, you gotta find out which hotel it is. What's the price point? Does it meet that? I mean, there's just so many sure. things to think about. You have all you can bring way more stuff. 
mm -hmm. you know, um, and your shower's in there, and I mean, yeah. you have to deal with TSA, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all that, so, and, and it's very, you know, the driving, it's, it's funny, but I still to this day will, like, fall asleep in a car at any point, because that's how much traveling we did, that yeah. there would be hours where I would just fall asleep in the motorhome <laughs> because of the rocking of mm -hmm. the motorhome, so it's still, like, this really comforting feeling to me, but that's how much we traveled, so. That's great. <laughs> yeah. So your dad had that business for 18 years, yes. so how did you end up in Chicago? So, um, after they closed the business, uh, my parents split up. Um, shortly thereafter, and my mother moved to Chicago, and my father went back to Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's really how that happened. So then my mother moved here, and after I, that was right at the point where I was in school, so I graduated, and I said, you know what, I've seen Miami, I know what it's all about, I'm ready to try out something different. So she was already there, it was kind of convenient, mm -hmm. kind of moved up here with her, and uh, built my network from there. Um, literally did not know, I knew like one person here and now, outside of my mom. I'm curious because your mom escaped Switzerland for the weather. Oh, I know. So why Chicago? So <laughs> she actually <laughs> likes the forest. And it seasons. is raining today, yeah, <laughs> by the way. I, I bring that up to her very often as well, but she just, she came up here for the natural healing world because it's very progressive. Chicago is more green, more, you know, open energy healing and alternative medicine. And so she uh, became a massage therapist in Miami before she moved to Chicago. So her whole intention was to build her natural healing business. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why she targeted this area. And I think for her, maybe at this point, after being in Miami for 18 years, you know, getting that instant or, 100% sunshine all day, every day. You know, I think she got it. <laughs> she, yeah, got she got it. her sunshine. She's good. Right. So now I think she's just pursuing um, business. You know, mm -hmm. she's really uh, more focused on uh, currently she's teaching law of attraction classes mm -hmm. all over um, in the north suburbs. She's going to start moving into the city. And she does energy healing. She works with um, children with ADD. She mm -hmm. does, helps cancer patients. She has healed many people in many unique capacities uh, with crystal light therapy and just, it's a, a treatment called Lahochi Energy Healing. So um, that's why she's here. But I wouldn't say that she'll be here forever. That's for sure. Because I think she puts up with it. Well, anything. it's already she's in her system that she travels. Yes. Yes. You know? so and when then naturally I think she'll even be like, you know, energetically drawn to another place. I, I can agree. use her. I agree. I think it as well. She's looked into Denver and things like that. So she'll, maybe eventually she will. Um, so, but now my father's in Switzerland, uh, out of Switzerland. Now, have you ever been back to Switzerland since yes. you left at the age of three months? Yes. Uh, well, we were, you know, it was great because every summer, obviously, we all get off from school, so I never really went to summer school. We would always go to Switzerland. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Swiss um, camp. Swiss <laughs> camp. Swiss, and it was great because, you know, you got to practice your language mm -hmm. and get in touch with your family again. And, you know, we had to realize we have no family here. So mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, we have an adoptive family. It was this huge Italian family in Miami that would bring us in every Thanksgiving, wow. every Easter, and, like, we built our own, you know, nuclear sort of environment here. Mm -hmm. And then for the only the only holiday we really would celebrate with our family was either Christmas or the 1st of August, which is like the 4th of July in mm -hmm. Switzerland. So it's Independence Day. So um, every summer we go to Switzerland, and I every week you go to this family, then you go to the next family, and you just like sleeping your house happy. Yes. Well, and so when we were on the phone the other day, we were laughing at the fact that like back in the day before Facebook, before social media yes. and everything, you land at that airport and your entire town knows that you're in town. Yes. It's like news travels so fast. Yeah. And like you're saying, the small villages, like my parents came from small towns yeah. too. And news just travels so fast. It's like, like we said, it's like faster than like someone tweeting it. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just like, boom. All they of a all talk. And, and it's a small country. So, again, it's not even as universal as the United States where, yeah. you know, you'd have a little more barrier there. But it's amazing. So you get there, you land. Everybody knows you have no way out. you got to see everybody. 
<laughs> and you have to eat. You have to eat. Yeah. And you, you get full. Like, you have breakfast at so-and-so's house. Then you got to go to so-and-so's house for lunch. Then you got to go, like, right after lunch to another person's house. Yep. And they give you a snack. Everyone is feeding you. And it's rude to not eat. Yeah. So you're just like constantly full. You're like, can I take a nap for a second? <laughs> yeah. And but amazing food, amazing. You know, everything there is very quality oriented. So you know, they they they're I think a little bit more ahead in the sense of you know organic food and making mm-hmm. sure the quality is all there. And and they eat so much more natural food. Every time I go to Switzerland, I lose like ten pounds immediately mm-hmm. just through not even trying to lose weight, but just the quality is better. It's yeah, less bad and you meat. said on the phone, what's a microwave? Right, right there, the oh. concept is what's a microwave? Exactly. No one has a microwave because everything is no. natural. So, And this is actually, we spoke on you know separate phone calls when we did our pre-interview conversations. So two things that really stood out to me, um, you know, and this is what I love about First Generation American Project is that, you know, we're from different parts of the world, but we have this common denominator of, you know, these, like cultural experiences of the language and traditions and everything. Uh, so two things that really stuck out for me was the food topic mm-hmm. and also the language topic. Yeah. And so you were teaching me about the dialect from where your parents are from, and you did as well. So, Sonali, I'll let you start first. Um, you said it's Gujarati. 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 So when we were interviewing Corrine and Sonali over the phone the other day, we were discussing all the nuances between languages within their respective countries. Sonali, you were telling us about the Hindi dialect versus the native language where your parents are from. So when we think about speaking English in the US, like we have, you know, our little dialects, like New Yorkers sound like New Yorkers, yeah. right? <laughs> Chicago, you know, Chicago, we sound yeah. so nice. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, anywhere that you're from, there's always different dialects, but the grammar stays the same. You know, it, it all pretty much is a universal language. Yeah. Um, you know, and of course, we have our different languages that we bring in. Um, from any countries that people came from, but what about in India? What is it like over there? So in India, my parents are from Gujarat, like I said earlier, so we speak Gujarati in our house. And then that was like the state language. So there's like Gujarat, there's Punjab where they speak Punjabi, and then there's like South India where they speak Malayalam or Telugu, you know. So there's like different languages within India and then the overall language that everyone or most people know and speak is Hindi. Mm -hmm. So if I go to um, Bombay, which is Mumbai, um, from Gujarat, then I would speak Hindi because they don't know Gujarati, Mm -hmm. you know. So um, I learned a Gujarati, obviously from my grandparents because I grew up speaking in Gujarati with them and they taught me how to read and write in it and say mm-hmm. everything I know. And then Hindi, I just learned by watching TV with my grandma, mm-hmm. <laughs> like the Indian channels and like the news they would say in Hindi. Um, they both are like written kind of similarly and spoken similarly, but they're also very different at the same time. Um, Gujarati is like m- more of the house language for my family. And then, um, Hindi is like the overall India language, I guess. Mm -hmm. So like all the Indian movies would be in Hindi, so everyone understands them, I guess. Are Um, you fluent in both? I'm fluent in Gujarati. I can read and write and speak. But with Hindi, I can speak and I can understand, but I can't write. So how would you compare it? Is it kind of like when people speak Italian versus Spanish, like it's kind of similar, but it's really different, yeah. or is it even closer or more different? I, I would say it's a little closer. Um, if I said, I can speak it right now, so if I say my name is Sonali, mm-hmm. I would say Mera naam Sonali He in Hindi, and then in Gujarati it would be like Maru naam Sonali Che. So it's mm-hmm. like a very okay. similar, but um, some words are different, pronounced and said, with some end with an A, which end in an E in like Gujarati or something like that. So, Have you ever mixed the two languages? Yeah, sometimes? and also like in high school, I grew up speaking in Spanish because we had Spanish class. So I would like try to speak in Hindi with my dad because he wants like he knows I'm fluent in Gujarati, so he wants me to practice Hindi more. Mm-hmm. So I'd speak in Hindi with him sometimes. Um, 
and I would put E instead of R. Like R <laughs> means and, and E means and in Spanish. But I would, I would mix them up. I so swear strange. I had the same exact experience. When I took Spanish in high school, I, you know, first language being Polish, then learn English. My dad's business employs uh, to Mexican workers, so he speaks fluent Spanish with them. Yeah. And so here I am at home and I'm trying to practice some Spanish and then I'll try to like slip into the Polish <laughs> and I'm trying to throw in an English word and I would just like trip up over yeah. three languages. In your case, four languages. You know, and that's yeah. really interesting. People might not even realize. They might think, okay, well you speak English and Hindi, but they don't even think that there's yet yeah. another language from the country. And then, and then high Spanish. school and Spanish. I'm not fluent in um, Spanish because I didn't carry that on in college, but um, I took five years of Spanish, so I know mm -hmm. uh, much. Like, I don't right. know. You can much. understand yeah. a lot. I can understand it and I can speak it. Maybe it'll be a little broken, like, instead of, like, conjugating the verb, I'll just sure. say it, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but I know a little bit. And then I'm also learning a little bit Italian now. Next Wow. <laughs> That's pretty great. Yeah. Because I'm going to study abroad, so I have to know the language if I'm going to go to the country. Well, let me know where you go and we'll visit you. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. You guys can come to Rome anytime. <laughs> Rome. We can do Rome. Oh, probably beautiful. I have <laughs> yes. A haven't visited yet. But. Me either. So what about in Switzerland? Okay. Because I, I'm going to be completely honest, mm -hmm. you know, it, maybe I just never really had any uh, necessity to study Switzerland, but I, when I found out from you, you know, it's like we're so intrigued by the fact that, oh my gosh, wow, like now packaging has Spanish as well, or like right. there's, you know, I, I actually went to a seminar recently and they were talking about like, how progressive it is that we now have Spanish in addition to the English language yeah. on packaging or signs throughout the city. Directions. Directions, on everything. Like right. But then in Switzerland, there's three languages on every yes. sign? Yes. So um, oh. Switzerland, the country is divided into four pre predominant areas. The Romanian area is very small. So it's actually um, Italian, French, German, and this little Romanian sliver, but the, the, the packaging and everything, everything is written in French, German, and um, Italian. Mm -hmm. So yes, that is a normal thing. You go to the sign, you're driving, you, you know, turn right is written in three different languages mm -hmm. and pick one. <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> um, and then on top of that, the, the next layer of that is in the German part, you speak and read and write in German. So in school, you, 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 you know, you use German, high German, we call it. And when you're, you sit in the classroom, literally when you talk to the teacher, you're talking Swiss, but you're reading, if you're going to read something, you're going to read German. So it's, it's interesting in that way. There is no official language. There's Swiss as a dialect. There's no written out format of it. So mm -hmm. it's just, that's kind of unique about it, mm -hmm. uh, that it, it just, maintains itself over, you know, 700 plus years, um, which is Switzerland 756, I can't remember exactly how many years old the country is, but um, very interesting, and then also the dialect uh, flexes depending on what area this uh, German part that you are, so, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like in the U.S., they have, you know, twang in the south, the New York accent, same thing in the German area, so, Language is big, and most most people there speak two languages off the bat. School, that is no brainer. You're going to need to learn because maybe you're, I, we have we have uh, cousins who live in the French part. So mm -hmm. when we were growing up, and I'd visit, well, we couldn't even talk because I didn't speak French. Mm -hmm. So you know, all you knew were key words like stop and stop running and things you know when you're mm -hmm. little. Uh, but that's it, and it, it's really it's really neat because now. All of my cousins, whether they are French or German, we all speak English. So that's the universal one in Switzerland that most people not only learn, you know, the hub languages, but mm -hmm. then they love to learn English. Just everybody. Has that always been the case, or is that like a recent thing? I think that more recently you could go there, and over the last five to ten years you would go, and you would, you almost have a hard time practicing Swiss or German because, mm -hmm. because everybody, everyone's trying to speak English. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
But again, growing up, it was different. You know, that's why I had the luxury of learning Swiss through my parents because they was that your first language? Yes. So okay. that was what I. Because before you go to school, you're only at home, so your parents, so that's my first language. It's not even a language. Right? <laughs> that's my first dialect. My first <laughs> sounds. <laughs> and then um, in third grade, they put me in the German program. So I studied German from third to twelfth grade. I also have a minor in it from Florida State. And at Florida State, I actually tried to learn French and Spanish as well, which really I got ambitious. up to level three, which was a huge rude awakening because... I thought, you know, I was all confident and cocky, basically, that I could learn languages or multiple languages, mm -hmm. but I had no notion of the fact that it's not a rom you know, German is not a romance language. So mm -hmm. French, Italian, the and Spanish. The pronunciation is a little different. <laughs> yes, and the order of the grammar and everything. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was really hard for me to do, but I, I do retain a little bit of French and Spanish. So, mm -hmm. but anyways, it was, it, you know, the German... Growing up, you know, like you said, you had one Hindu friend. So because I was in the German program, I never left my bubble, okay? Because my friends <laughs> were German too. Their families, same scenario. One parent or two parents moved to the States, and they wanted to have their children continue to learn the culture. And I really gained a love for German. I mean, I would read poems, and really there's a beauty to it. I mean, you, you cannot capture the same meaning in an English language. This is not possible. Yeah, that's I know different. one little rhyme poem in Polish, or in German. Yes. Ich bin ich und du bist so. Ich yes. heiße Anja und wie heißt du? <laughs> I am I and you are you and my name is Anja and what is your name? <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. as far as I can go. <laughs> yes, and there's so many um, famous poems out there that you know, have shaped the culture in Switzerland or Germany, and so it is very interesting. And I mean, we have great authors and writers in the in the in American history as well. Mm -hmm. But you know, again, it's just this thing. You know, you think you get tired of it, but it's just never lost its depth for me. And I just continued and continued to dive deeper. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, like I only really learned the poetic side of things. So when it came to, well, Kareen, do you want to move to Switzerland or what have you? I'm thinking, whoa, let's calm down because I don't speak business. Or I don't have great right, business or technical terminology mm -hmm. under my belt. Whereas you know, you want to talk about poems? That's fine. You sure. want to talk about, you know, maybe literature? you can join like a liberal arts college yes. or something. <laughs> But it would be a little, it would be a, a hiccup to just, I'm sure I could catch on, but, you know, even reading the newspaper could be a little bit of a challenge because in German, actually, the, the language, the words, they're known for compound words. So a word could be literally 17 characters, 24 mm -hmm. characters. So they just compound different words and create one. And it's just, it could be a little scary. So, well, and I, I can totally um, understand that apprehension, but also at the same time, I can't help but think about our parents and then all of them just being like, yeah, I'm going to move to America. No, oh, yeah, I don't speak English. Yeah, I'm going to start a business or many. Yes. <laughs> you know, and yes. so that when I was freshly graduated out of college, I decided that, hey, I'm going to move to Denver. That was a big deal. <laughs> it, it was a huge deal, and, you know, totally went against my father's will, and I broke his heart, and I still apologize for it to this day. Like, obviously, I'm back in Chicago, so we know yeah. how that story went. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I was kind of laughing to him at the time, and I was like, Dad, you realize that you crossed an ocean, and I'm crossing, like, two states. Right. So it's not a big deal. Right. I can, like, fly home to visit you within it's a couple of hours. Incredible. Absolutely, and also for my father, I think he had a little bit of a benefit because he was he was marketing to European customers. Right. So it's not even that he was selling telling someone in Miami, why don't you tra travel to the U.S. I mean, mm -hmm. he could care, and that just wasn't his target market. So he still had he had just used his network from Europe and mm -hmm. brought it here, which is I think is different. Yeah. Being Indian and coming, and then obviously you have your your you said that his brother was here. But outside of that, your father literally had to shake hands with so many new people and just exactly. build things up mm -hmm. from nowhere, right. you know? And yeah. I don't know how I would have, like, done it if I were him. I always think, like, what if he didn't come here? What if I was born in India and mm -hmm. it was up to me to come here and bring my whole family here? I, 
I yeah, no pressure. Well You're just in charge of everyone else's future. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I don't know how I would have done it. Um, I, I like I said, I have big shoes to fill, and I don't know. Like I'm trying, but I don't know if I can You'll because. See. <laughs> well, and so I just want to tell you how impressed I was to find out that you're 19 years old, <laughs> and you started your own business already. Uh -huh. And um, we actually we could pull up our computer here, so I have all the different screens between your business and your business as well. So here I have the Flirty Yoga website, and you gave me a disclaimer. So I work in web development, I work for All Information Services, and I do websites all day. I don't build them, but I sell them, I consult on how to make them better, and I saw your website. And for a 19-year-old who is starting her first business ever, I think this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I was super impressed to see this. And so I'm going to click through your website here. Why don't you tell us about Flirty Yoga? Okay, so Flirty Yoga is um, a brand, a new brand of yoga pants. And um, for right now, we only have seven designs. But in the future, hopefully, it will be maybe a yoga studio and have more athletic apparel. But... Um, for right now, it's very small since we just started, um, and you could show the website, mm -hmm. and I can point it out. But the website's just recently made. It was up and running in April, and we only had like two months to work on it since we had the pictures February. So it's not at its best, but it's something for now. <laughs> and so I have the website up right now. I'm not sure if our back studio can uh, access it, but... Uh, just in case we are unable to show it, let's see. Oh, there it is. Great, we've got it on the screen. So I'll click on this pair right here. So what makes these yoga pants different from like you know other brand name ones that we see at the mall? Well, these are made in the U.S., which is the biggest factor. Um, great material. Um, it doesn't shrink in the wash. I've had so many other yoga pants that always shrink because I am tall and I need long yoga pants. So these. Are perfect. And Corinne and I can completely relate to that. I like yeah. to say I have giraffe legs. So <laughs> it's always very difficult yeah. to find any kind of pants. And I was really happy to see like the cropped pants come back. <laughs> I was like, good. It doesn't look like it's I'm not right. Blood right now. Right. No, I think they're they're amazing. I like the dragon design on this side. It kind of gives and you this like sense of power or something. I so think. you were yeah. sweet enough to actually bring me a pair today. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. So this is the back side, and it's got your flirty yoga Love label. Though. So yeah, and these are super long. So I love that, and they stretch, and they're not going to shrink. No. And I mean, what a great product for a first generation American. To have a made in the USA product as well and then we've got the design right here and that's the dragon design um, this is actually like quite the design too because it's not it's just, just a print design yeah. but there's actually some texture to it and it's kind of like a 3d so this is so exciting and I swear so we had Franklin Drog here and he is the founder of Inside Smiles mm -hmm. so you know yes. a good friend of ours and I go to his yoga classes. I've only been to like a handful of yoga classes and I've only been to his. And one day I'm texting him and I'm like, I don't have any nice yoga pants. Can you recommend a place? And true story, like I can pull up my text right now. <laughs> so I'm so excited that this <laughs> happened. So thank you so much. I can't wait to wear these. And next time I go to yoga with Franklin, I will definitely tell everyone where to find these. And so uh, we can actually buy these at flirtyyoga.com. Yeah. Great. Right now it's just online. So, um, and what you said yesterday and, you know, kind of being in web development for so long and I've never actually heard this phrase, but you said click and mortar. Yeah. I as mean, opposed to brick and mortar. And I'm like, that's so that's smart. Good. That's brilliant. <laughs> well, yeah, I've been, since I'm in college and I'm taking business classes, I mean, we've been learning little about you know computers websites so I guess that's what it's called nowadays um, hmm. and it's funny because it's, it's like even in our industry it's just like e-commerce e-commerce but yeah. I'm totally borrowing that and I'm gonna pull that into my I love that way <laughs> of talking as well and then you also have a Facebook page yeah great so uh, we could just Google flirty yoga you'll come up with your website right yeah. away we'll find your uh, Facebook page here 
And I love that it says, guaranteed a flirty look. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. We have the two pants, flirty fit pants, and then we have the designer fit pants. Which mm-hmm. ones? That one's a designer one because it has a dragon on it and Got it's it. a little washed. So when I wear them, everyone thinks they're like jeans or something, not mm-hmm. like yoga pants. And then we have the plain ones that are um, just plain like charcoal or navy, and then it has two colored bands, which is a little different from our normal one, you know, yoga pant band. And that would be this one yeah. right here. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And, and these look great. I love the fact that it can fold. Yeah. I like that very much. And see, then the label see, is great. They're um, the charcoal pants um, and then with the dark blue and um, purple band. And um, actually this girl or, um, is our one of our brand ambassadors mm-hmm. for 30 Yoga. She goes to Nepal. Her name is Alyssa. Mm-hmm. And um, we're trying to interview for more. So if anyone well, I'm already volunteering because <laughs> I go to yoga with Franklin. Franklin's got a great network as well, yeah. and so I can't wait to have these on class and be like, oh, you want to know where they're from? Check the label. <laughs> <laughs> and 19 really years cool. old, so I know that you said that you have big shoes to fill, but you know, you've got a great role model, your yeah. dad, so he's a great person to help you along the way and you know for me I'm just so proud to see you as a first generation Mm -hmm. entrepreneur American so congratulations on the new business and so also you brought us the uh, Berry Boost so this is actually a product of your dad's yeah um, it's called Berry Boost Energy and you can go to Mm berryboostenergy.com or Pure IU because it's part of um, Pure IU which has a lot of different products. Mm-hmm. Um, Berry Boost is basically very natural. It's an energy drink, so you can just mix it in water. Um, so you just take a bottle of water. You've got then, this right here, yeah. and actually, so what I did see is that there is a scooper, scooper yeah. inside here, so that just makes it easy and it measures it out for you, and then you can mix it up, and it smells great. And um, it that was mocha flavored. Ooh. Great. And we also have pina colada. So. Ooh, very nice. Great. Well, thank your dad yeah, for well, me for that as well. But, yeah, um, my dad's, like, the main reason I started this. He's, like, my motivation. Wonderful. Yeah. And I like to say that, too. You know, my dad started his own recycling business, and, you know, your father came here, started a business as well. Your mother is running her own business to help people. And I think we all have that entrepreneurial spirit from our parents. Our parents. They, they say it's in your Oh yeah. yeah, you cannot. You you just. There's no denying it. It's no there. No other way. <laughs> now, so in addition to wearing my awesome new flirty yoga pants to yoga, I yes. can't wait to wear them to Hip Hop Aerobics Chicago. I know. Kareen, tell be... us about Hip Hop Aerobics Chicago. So Hip Hop Aerobics Chicago, obviously founded in Chicago, um, but basically what this is is um, a really new and exciting dance. Uh, aerobics fitness class. So what it does is it combines high and low aerobics movements with different um, dance choreo- choreography. Mm-hmm. So it just because it's called hip hop aerobics doesn't mean we're only doing popping and locking. Right. And just like because standing on your head and spinning around. Yes. I and <laughs> right. No. It's it, and there will you know we're gonna have variations. Um, but and it also doesn't mean we only listen to hip hop music, which is the exciting part about it. When you think about all the types of music there are and what really gets people going, it could be dubstep, it could be house music, it could be hip hop. Polka, polka. Hey, hey. <laughs> we'll have to do that one just for you. <laughs> I, I have an accordion that we can use. Yes, my Three mother story. actually played the accordion. <laughs> Too funny. So um, what this is is uh, this is the type of class you want to go to to take an hour out of your day and just get out of your head and get into your body and feel free to get some release stress you know and put your own style into things too so just because we teach you the choreography um, the way the class is formatted is the first five to eight minutes is a warm-up and then the next 10 to 20 minutes is us teaching you a routine and then the next 20 to 30, depending on how long it took us to teach you, because we don't repeat the same routine twice in a month. Mm -hmm. So you could be an avid student and never get bored. We also don't repeat a song twice in the same month. So that is a huge guarantee that no other business is doing right now. Yeah, it's not like listening to the radio or I mean, or walking into any club in Chicago. Any. the same song. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and we're putting a lot of time and energy into making sure that that quality standard is met. 
um, which is what I think is the thing that just people love. You know, they just mm -hmm. want to be slightly challenged, not to the point where they're going to be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. um, this is for non-dancers and, you know, people that just want like to go to the club and let loose, but they, you know, it actually originally started because I love to dance so much that I will go out all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and let me tell you, going out all the time is expensive, always, sometimes a waste of time, and you tend to drink more than you would if you were going to a restaurant or other location. Well, and sometimes it's like you go out to our awesome swanky clubs in Chicago, yes. and like people like to stand around. Yeah, yeah too. just stand and talk. And I, I'm the one that's like bouncing up you and down. You are. Or sometimes <laughs> I'll, I've been known to maybe take off my shoes and stand on a couch because it right. feels like a trampoline. Right. You know, but. And it's I don't want to feel bad about dancing to the music that the DJs play. Exactly. So I love this concept. Oh yeah. And I see it says take a class, teach a class, and host a class. Yes. So tell us about hosting a class. Well, um, if you have a hotel with a space with, that has enough room for us to do a class, by all means, we'll come in and put together some choreography for, for you. We're actually currently um, we've done that at the JW Marriott on mm -hmm. Adams in the Loop so Vallejo Salon and Spa we did a guest class there um, it's fun to have for a party you know you want to get girls together bachelorette mm -hmm. party what have you how I fun mean, I mean I would much rather have your company come in and host a hip-hop class versus the alternative of like Chippendales coming into my living room yeah <laughs> <laughs> and that's it, 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 it's, it's yes it's sexy but it's not you know there are definitely there's lyrical elements to it this so we, we 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 meet the entire range of dance however you can possibly imagine it to be honest but there is a sexy flair to it so you mm -hmm. should feel that again going back to the class structure within after the 10 minute mark of repeating it that it's in the, the beats and the motions are in your muscles so now you're at a point where yes you're doing it over and over but now you should be able to like add your own flair, you know, okay, and become great. more of a contributor to the choreography. Mm -hmm. So that's where I found that I find the best release is just not worrying. I don't want to be at a club and worry about how does my makeup look and how does my hair look and oh my God, I look like a sweaty mess. And why is this guy trying to talk to me? And <laughs> why is this guy talking to me? Yeah. And, and you know what? It's just I'm getting a workout here, right. you know, at the end of the day, yes, I am sweating, and yes, you'd be stretched, you know, and the, the mirrors can fog up, and all this crazy fun stuff, but, you know, it's, it's so much healthier of a way to work out and get that dance out, mm -hmm. and not only that, you have to think about all the people, you know, here we are, we're sitting around, and, you know, we can throw on a dress and get out there and do whatever, but there's some people who literally have fitness goals, and they never go out. They never get that release of dancing. Mm -hmm. And I want to create an environment where they can come Friday. I mean, I want to teach on Friday nights. Right. I don't care about clubs. I want to teach my classes. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, and I'm, I'm right there I, with you. It's like I, I network so much throughout the week, and I meet so many great people. And, you know, I, I like the networking aspect of it because you're actually having conversations. But then sometimes when you step into the club, like, you feel weird about dancing, because people are, you know, they say exactly. dance like no one's watching. Everyone's watching. Everyone's you know? watching. So you can't help but feel a little self-conscious about yeah. it. And, uh, you know, like, come Friday night, I'm tired. You know, I, mm -hmm. I work my career, you know, right. very thoroughly but throughout you want the week. Something and then, fun. You yeah. need something fun that, and of course that it's a workout is great, but it's literally a release. It's mm -hmm. not, a, you know, it's not... Sex, but it's like no, but seriously, it can feel so good just right, to just the endorphins, wave of off the stress, bring in the endorphins, um, and then imagine Saturday morning you're not waking up hungover. Let's just be honest, and you know, how you're going to feel. You can right. continue, especially as entrepreneurs, you're always on the go. You got to stay right. focused. So I would mm -hmm. totally go to that class because I hate working out. I hate running. I hate doing yep. any of it. But if it's dancing, yes. I'll do it. And if I'm like working out at the same time, I'm gonna keep my body in shape. I love it. Well, I and love another it. thing too is that you're 19 years old. Yeah. You know, so unless you're trying to sneak in with a fake ID, I love the fact that this yes. is a non-alcoholic environment. Yeah. Where you're not pressured to drink, and you know, I have my cousin goes to Loyola. I would love to hang I out with Loyola. her. You do you know Diana Diana Schott? 
Um, I'll introduce you guys. Okay, this is yeah. The first generation. <laughs> Same topic. <laughs> She'll be in here too one day. Uh, you know, but I would love to hang out with you guys. Yeah. You know, in a non like adult crazy nightlife exactly. setting too. So I love that. That's yes. really great. And so going back to you loving dance. So you said that in high school you joined your club that yeah. is a dance club as well. Tell yeah. us about that. Well, it was called Indoplat Club. So like Indian people. I mean, it was, like, traditional. Um, so we had a show every year, so we would, like, perform. And it would be um, traditional dancing, just, like, Bollywood, fun dancing, mm -hmm. and, like, skits, and, like, wearing our Indian clothes, just showing up, like, showing our fashion, mm -hmm. all of that. So I was in, um, I joined my junior, senior year, because I wasn't really involved in all of that before, because... I didn't have any friends, but then I realized, oh, I should just join this. It sounds great. <laughs> it's a great way to make friends. Yeah, so I joined it, and um, senior year, I became on the board of it because I loved it so much. Great. Yeah, so um, we put together the show, and I was in, like, a couple dances. Um, I don't do Bharatanatyam, which is the traditional dance, but I did the Bollywood, which was dancing to Indian music. but like Which we've all become really familiar with yeah. in the last few years because it really kind of became popular in America yeah. as well. And now it's actually what I'm finding too, even with Poland as a country, I mean, they're so progressive right now. It's really amazing to see, you know, America obviously has always been like the world leader in trends and fashion and movies and everything. But my parents always have the Polish TVs, like satellite channels on. And I mean, fashion wise, like the girls out there, their hair is just amazing. Like all these exactly. cute, funky haircuts. Their outfits are great. And I remember, you know, before it's like either family couldn't afford it or it just wasn't even available, we would be sending clothes to Poland if my brother and I wore it once or twice or we would buy new stuff for them. And now it's like I see what my cousins are wearing out there. I'm like, that's so cute. Like I would yeah. go to the store and find something like that out here. And it's really progressive, you know. It's like... It's on the book side thing, now, yeah. you know, and you were saying that you had on an outfit and your mom's like, that's so old. They yeah. wore this a year ago. And I was yeah. going to a wedding and I was wearing this um, Indian outfit. It's like a tree dash. So it had like the tight pants and then the top and mine was like a straight top. But um, my mom's like, you're wearing that right now. I bought you that two years ago. Like go wear something new because mm -hmm. the new or fashion in India is something different. So like mm -hmm. now I guess it's like tight here and then it just flows out into an umbrella. So I was like, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> go shopping. <laughs> yeah, take me shopping. <laughs> Very Pretty cute. Fun. Yeah, so we're both just doing really exciting um, projects or businesses, basically. That and, and that target health and fitness, which mm -hmm. I truly believe that America specifically the United States, and coming from Switzerland, knowing different nutritional values, under, never having believed in the food pyramid, and, you know, always eating more fruits and vegetables since the beginning, since I was born. Mm -hmm. um, I think that America is really hitting a point where they are embracing fitness with CrossFit, 5,000 CrossFit locations, mm -hmm. everybody jumping on board, everybody posting about nutritional facts on Facebook and social media. Right. I mean, following on Twitter. That, it, it, it's like an un, you cannot crunch the thirst of people when it comes to do how much information there is that we are so interested in learning about health and fitness, about your spiritual awareness, about your mind-body connection. I mean, this is like new topics for America. Right. New ground, which is amazing. I think everybody's getting really excited into it and appreciating the food, appreciating what goes into a hot dog or a hamburger or a frappuccino or a healthy salad. You know, right. and understanding and valuing and sitting down and, and actually liking that time where we sit down to dinner. Because another thing is food in America is kind of fast. Everything's fast. Let's right. just throw it on the table. You know, in, in Switzerland, it was like you go home for lunch mm -hmm. during the day when you go to school. From kindergarten to high school, you come home for lunch and eat with your family. Mm -hmm. And your mom yeah. cooks you a warm meal every lunch. Yeah, and, and it's not only fresh and healthy. Dinner. So it's so different. And I think we're getting there. Yeah. Coming from this Swiss, like, upraising my parents, you know, it's always been a conflict. I, you know, I don't like fast food. I don't like this fast 
paced environment. Mm -hmm. I want to appreciate value my food. And so um, I think that America is really getting somewhere. I think we're going to, you know, this obesity epidemic, mm -hmm. I think, you know, even the school system, you know, getting the kids more active, you know, healthier foods, not getting health then, Patrick Maine, he's getting um, healthy products into vending machines, mm -hmm. which is just, just get it out of people's reach. it seems like such a trivial concept or something that's just been like, you know, an incredible feat for our culture out here in America. Absolutely. And I think, you know, it, and it might even perhaps be the, the influence of immigrants, you know, yes. bringing yeah. in that natural food, bringing in, you know, all these different... Because the yoga comes from yeah. India. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That is an Indian practice. My right? grandpa actually does yoga. Like, I used to sit with him when I was younger, and if I woke up early one day, like on a Saturday or Sunday, I would just sit with him and do yoga. And he's... 74 and mm -hmm. he walks four miles every day there's not a day he skips if it's raining he'll take an umbrella if it's snowing he'll wear four layers like he'll go no matter wow. what he's he's him and my dad like our family is so healthy there he's the reason he like brings all organic food in the house mm -hmm. um healthy eating he'll bring all this ayurvedic stuff mm -hmm. um it's all herbal natural stuff from india and mm -hmm. like these powders these Whatever it is, he'll put it in food, oil, whatever it is, he'll cook it with that. Um, we're so used to eating at home. My mom and my grandma cook all the time. And my grandpa didn't, when I, were, I was younger, he did not allow any outside food. So if we want a pizza, he'd be like, no, make it at home with, like, wheat, not, like, flour, you know, mm -hmm. like, wheat dough. or um, It was just, like, that was, like, a concept that we had to live up to um, with my grandpa in the house. And... Um, from him, that's what we learned, like the spiritual aspect of it mm -hmm. and the healthy energy and the positive energy that came right. from healthy eating and working out, I guess, mm -hmm. and doing yoga and being all calm and meditation. That's what my dad always says, like, you have to be calm all the time. Right. And that's, I mean, you know, you could tell that this is something that's really just been instilled in you. And yeah. I mean, even, you know, I, I'd like to say there's a nice calm energy in here, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely, Absolutely. you could tell that it's just, and when you we, both are very when, grounded. And when we come from a p place of peace, we make better decisions. Exactly. And if you are a CEO, or you work somewhere, or you're just making daily, and we make hundreds of thousands of decisions. And those decisions can make things great or make things negative. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I just pray that this, you know, peace continues to flow and it becomes popular because we have a lot of problems in the world that are because of poor decision making. Mm -hmm. And if we can get to the root of why we act in such flux, why we are so reactive instead of, you know, proactive, proactive yeah. or you know, why do we choose the short-sighted short solution? Why didn't we go for the long-term solution mm -hmm. when we had the chance? You know, when it comes to our environment or any, any world problem, if we had just sat there for two more minutes and thought about it <laughs> and not and let the it. pressures, pressures always determine decisions and not let money always be a decision factor, yeah. which is a superficial layer of consciousness that right. we don't, you know, we need to just cr make better decisions. And I think that that comes from yoga, meditation, and, and anything. I, for me, I can't sit and meditate. That my mind is so cluttered, I can't do that. But I can do high energy sports and fitness, and it brings me to that same place. Mm -hmm. So I think there's two kinds, and probably some other things in the middle, but um, you just gotta create something for someone to like. So yeah. some people mm -hmm. like yoga and some people like high energy. So I'm just pioneering this one and you guys yeah. pioneer that one. And well, then and life is all about balance and I think you guys are bringing a good balance. Yeah. So best of both worlds. Yeah. And so, Corrine, uh, we're also taking a look here at your Facebook page. Sure. So we can find you at Hip Hop Aerobics Chicago on Facebook. Yeah. And when is your next class, or how can we sign up? Just right on your website, Yes, right? go to the website, tell us, give us your zip code and your email address. And pretty much in July, we're going to have a lot more programming going on in every different city. 
part of the city, so Lakeview, Lincoln Park. We just believe that we want to be convenient. So mm -hmm. we're going to set up classes based around where the demand is. So we've had probably 100 inquiries on our website just from it being there, sitting there, saying, give us your email address and your phone number and um, zip code, and that's how we're eventually going to have all of our classes being run. But uh, to take a class, we're going to do another demo event on July 14th. Still, everything's a little bit being determined as far as where we want to do each event. But that sounds great. <laughs> that sounds yeah. Awesome. Actually, so I'm thinking for the uh, July first generation American event, I was thinking about doing a beach. So maybe we could all kind of collab. Be great. And then we'll rock the pants. Yeah. We'll do some hip hop. We'll be, be proud great. of being first generation. Mm -hmm. I think all day. It's a good <laughs> progression there. Oh, okay. great. And so, and I also want to invite you both, and for anyone that's joining us today as well, uh, we do have our next First Generation American Meetup. Uh, it's a drinks and dialogue meetup that we do every month, and traditionally what we'd like to do is get into groups and uh, exchange this dialogue with each other. There's a list of questions that I hand out to each person, and then they team up with a partner, and everyone gets to ask each other these questions, and then we'll have a group discussion around it as well. Uh, but this one is a little bit more different. We're going to have more of a networking setting and uh, just getting everyone together, teaching them about the cause. We are currently in process of setting up First Generation American pro Project as a nonprofit. So, you know, this is a mission motivated organization. We want to get First Generation Americans together to share their stories. Um, we've got some mentorship opportunities that we're creating as well where we can team up with younger first-generation American students who do have English as a second language and kind of help them get through the experiences that we're all familiar with. Uh, so the event at Vertigo Sky Lounge is open to all generation Americans. It doesn't matter if you're first or you're fifth or you came from another country five days ago. Uh, you're welcome to join us. It's free to attend. We will have drink specials. We'll have great raffle giveaways. You might even be able to snag an awesome pair of flirty yoga pants. So please do join us on Tuesday, June 25th from 7 to 9 p.m. You can also connect with us on Facebook at facebook.com slash firstgenerationamerican. My name is Anya Jablonowski. Thanks so much for tuning in to First Generation American Drinks and Dialogue.